Good morning, everybody. And today is the last day in the month of May 2022. Um, my name is Heretic, Heretic at this uh, market analyst at HFM Nigeria. And as always, we'll check through the markets and then see if the dominant sentiment, what the dominant sentiment is, um, if it provides opportunities, and then how we can take advantage of it. But please, like always, do remember that this is just a communication material. And nothing in this communication contains or should be considered as investment advice or investment recommendation. Users acknowledge that investments in FX and CFD products is characterized by a certain degree of uncertainty and that any investment of this nature involves a high level of risk for which users are solely responsible and liable. What we have this morning is, it's the last day of the month, um, so it was the last day of the month, last day of the quarter, last day of the year. So it was the last trading days. I'm talking about trading days of the um, half year as well. You usually get that profit taking, rebalancing, portfolio rebalancing, all that. And it could lead to choppy and messy price action. And then so far today, markets are trading cautiously amidst, you know, our, this month's inflows, right? The overall stats is mostly mixed, right? Um, you have disjointed moves amongst risk assets. For example, our equities are generally lower, but commodities are higher. Right? Equities are lower as well. But, you know, on the back of the last rally over the last two weeks, basically, we are seeing some pullbacks after US rally found the top around um, for 200. That's in yesterday's session. It's down so far today, about 0 0.9. So as I went out writing this, now it's back up again by a few peeps there again. So I mean, you see that back and forth, you know, all over the place. Equities down, commodities are higher. Even though on the commodity side, I think EU's ban on Russian oil, you know, is one of the major catalysts there. And then you have that generally bond yields are trading mix, some up, some down. And then measures of volatility are mostly higher on the back of lower equities as well. So having said that, the big stories have not really been you know, overly overwhelming in markets. Yes, there was some from the EU side and then some from the US side. We had the Fed, Federal Reserve member as well, um, on the wires yesterday where he basically said that, you know, he expects 50 basis points to remain on the table at every meeting going forward right, until you get inflation back to us target. Now, inflation, don't forget, inflation is around 7 to 8% right now, 8% right, actually right now. And then, you know, having to pull it back towards 2% levels is going to take a while. So that means that he's talking about the hikes could still remain on the table beyond the next two meetings, like what's been the talk across markets um, generally. And then, that is a worry in itself because markets recently have been worrying that the Fed might have to slow down the federal, um, on interest rate hikes because the effect on the economy is going to be very evident. And having to hike too much really would cause an extra strain on an already troubled economy already. So that is, you know, one thing that, you know, we need to pay attention to. But having said that, though, having said that, though, you have that um hawkish comments generally and that supports us a lot from yesterday continue as well into the session as well you look at the dollar index gap to the upside to start the day it's currently up about 0 0.33 percent oil prices also got a boost right we had eu also agree on a ban of russian oil about to toward ban on russian oil right um russian exports to the eu right and that's a very 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 major part of russia's exports right so there is that and then even, there's also talk that may also extend to about 90 percent by 2022 end, right? So clearly that is a supportive factor for oil prices because now with that ban, it means that more supply of or um, supply of oil reduces as well, and that is supportive for price. Oil prices are up. US oil particularly is up by 1.33% so far today, very close to the $120 per barrel level. Now it's pulled back a bit from those highs, and at those lofty levels, deeper pullback will not be a surprise. But clearly, it's what we are seeing so far in today's session. Apart from this, you know the moves has been a little bit here and there. Right. You look at currencies, for example, US leads the majors, yes, but JPY and CAD are not, not so far behind. CAD clearly being supported by oil prices, JPY is supported by low equities, US supported by the hawkish comment back from Federal Reserve member Waller. Right. On the other hand, you have NZD weakest amongst the majors. You have the euro also down there. Right. The ban on Russian oil clearly is not really a good thing because there's going to be strain in the euro economy there so there is that but CTF is also one of the weakest currencies so far today we had gdp data for um switzerland early today we'll look at that in a bit right and then you look at all those moves there's still an atom of marginality in, in what we are seeing so far i had this written i said you know despite the overall negative tilt in sentiment the overall moves are mostly mixed and the ranges are really small and and you know as we wrap up you know, the month of May. So clearly more rebalancing and profit taking could still continue in the day ahead. So please, please put that in mind. In the day ahead on the calendar, yes, Q1 GDP for Canada is on schedule, right? Um, and then 
on that particular one, growth is expected to show slowdown. So there's that to pay attention to. And then there's a meeting between Fletcher Powell and President Biden. Well, we'd like to know if there is any talk on inflation from um, that particular meeting um, with the US government also pressuring for inflation to come down. If that's the case, and Powell comes out to pledge to pull inflation down all means necessary as much as he can or within his powers. Clearly, that means that hikes are coming in more and that could even support the dollar even some more. So you have to pay attention to in terms of whatever comments comes out from that. But generally, it's a light one. You know, the environment is one of those ones where you want to be very cautious with month end, possible rebalancing, really towards the London fix, you could get a lot of, you know, back and forth messy action. And I'll show you what I'm talking about on the chat now. So how about we just tread a little more carefully and then Pay attention to what's really, really going on, right? All right, so having said that, just a quick look across board. Like we said, equities are showing some downside after finding the top yesterday. This is the US 500. Haven't found the top in yesterday's session. Just a quick one. I'm loading up, it's taking a bit to load up. Why am I not saying that? All right, why we wait for that? I think my internet is a little bit down. Okay, right. Um, haven't found a top in yesterday's session. Now we've had a little bit of pullback right into the heading into today's session. Now it's not so much of moves. I mean, all of this for US 500 is just down about 0.45%. I mean, this is basically nothing, right? In terms of the kind of moves that we've seen so far, right? But having said that, you know, you look at the kind of upside that we've seen over the last couple of, you know, sessions, right? But last really last full one week, Right now, having said that, this level, this kind of high levels, having to see some form of pullback might not really be a surprise, especially heading into the kind of environment that we are right now. So, um, I'm talking about month end, I mean, it's rebalancing and profit taking. So, there's that to put back of our minds. But in terms of convictions for moves lower in line with the overall tilt negative, I'm not really convinced about that right now. Um, I think there might still even be room for upside. I prefer to even see some upside on the pair, but not in today's session, clearly. Maybe a deeper, deeper, deeper pullback later on if we have a stronger catalyst to help us with that. But in the meantime, not something I'm interested in right now. And it's the same story across other equities, uh, equities especially the futures. Right? Similar story there. We had upside throughout last week, through yesterday. It's not loading up, okay? Right, it's up now. I see. It's taking a bit of time to load, but we had that upside through most of yesterday. Towards the end, it started to pull back some more um, hawkish comments from Walla as well. Clearly, it's not a good um, input for equities, and we're seeing some downside in today's session. Um, the VIX that we're seeing is going to push higher as well, right? I mean, today's session so far. So there's also that to also show. Yes, this is clearly in line with the downside we're seeing in equities, but in terms of convictions and continuation of moves, it's not something that I'm looking out for. Right. So um, having said that, oil prices, yes, oil prices have continued to push higher in line with that overall positive when we talk about um, EU banning Russian oil. When I say positive, I mean positive for oil prices. Not as really a positive in terms of uh, what's going on. But having said that, it's a supportive factor because that means the less supply and that's higher price. Now, you look at oil prices have been pushing higher as well for the last couple of sessions. I mean, over the last two weeks, right? Clearly, what the last okay, we're still one and a half week after making a clear low around the 18th or 19th of May. Now, what I just did here was I tried to pull up a Fibonacci from the lows right to the highs here, and then, in as much as yes, upside, upside, I don't think at this lofty levels is reasonable to jump in buying here. When we were heading into key resistance around 120, and last time we hit all time highs around that 120 per barrel, we really pushed lower from there. But it wasn't all time highs, let's say, uh, how many years now? Um, about a decade highs, over a decade, over 12 years highs, really. The last time we got to that level, I mean, we pulled back strongly. So having to head into levels like that, it becomes a little bit tricky once again. But if we could see a rotation back towards the 23.6 level around this key round number 115, also the highs of 17 and 18th of May, that could be interesting in terms of looking for the upside on this. But apart from that, in today's session, though, heading, I want to get mountain out of the way. I think that that would help a lot more, right? If you have you know, something clearer to deal with. But in the meantime, there's that to pay attention. So if you look over to currencies, strengths and weakness of currencies, is it lagging USD leading? But then look at you know what we've seen over the last couple of hours, right? Or minutes, basically just back and forth, back and forth moves, and it's not really giving us so much to work with on that front. But right? yes, we had that initial downside, but I mean so far really really not so much and now we're back within yesterday's range so it's just a little bit tricky for me yes on the morning show yesterday we talked about euro 
where we said I would like to sell um, the card against the euro, sell the card against you know the Australian dollar in line with expectations for not as hawkish Bank of Canada going into the meeting later in the week. Now, that what, what I would like to see would be the Bank of Canada come out, you know, either just hiking my 50 basis point and stress the, the strain on the economy, or not even hiking up to 50 basis point, that would even be good. But anything that just gives a negative catalyst for the Canadian dollar, I would like to see some downside in the card and means upside for something like Euro versus card. Now, having looked at this, but this is not a bad idea, this level we are right now. I mean, this was this key level around 1.36, lows here, lows here, low, low, right? Resistance around here, resistance around there. Now we're back here. But ideally, this wouldn't be a bad idea. Although with oil prices being up so far in today's session, offers supporting the card, it becomes a little bit tricky to try and jump in from here. But there's something you want to also have at the back of your mind on your radar, right? That can really help. If you have stronger catalysts that can help, I wouldn't take this now. Euro is clearly weak right now. Um, the card is clearly strong right now. In today's session, short term into um trades, but Overall, heading into the meeting, I think I want to still see for the upside on this particular pair you know, going forward. But I mean, it's something I want to pay attention to and see how it plays out. I also like AUD versus card as well. We also talked about this as well. In terms of looking for further upside, like I said, in today's session, it might be a little bit tricky. Equities being down doesn't really help you know, the case for um, AUD longs. But I mean, it's something I'm paying attention to for the week. And I think I'd like to see how this plays out, you know, going into the week. We've already had this key overall support level going back from the 13th of May. And we've tested it time and time and time again. If you clear out this one to the downside, it nullifies my idea. But as long as we still have a stay above this, clear out this key 0 0.91 level, we tested, I think I would prefer that looking for further upside on this particular one. On the calendar today, I'm to light one. Yes, we had... Um, GDP for Switzerland, but basically this one never never just does anything. Data from Switzerland, even Japan, basically moves anything. But later in the day, we're expecting GDP for Canada, right? Yes, numbers are expected to slow down. I'd like to see this, see how this plays out. And then it could even put in some input into what the Bank of Canada meeting is going to say later in the week. So just put this in the back of your mind, you know, heading into today's session. But generally, it's really, really a light one. It's one of those messier days where you want to be more patient and not looking to jump into, you know, any low quality trade ideas right in the session. I had so thank you very much um if you have any questions please do not hesitate to ask and like always we'll do our best to help thank you to enjoy the rest of your trading session bye for now